I bought a device from an AliExpress which tracks posture and found there some interesting things. First one is a vibration motor, which makes the device shaking when you tilt your back too much. And another one is a tilt sensor itself. I found working principle of both of them really interesting and worth attention from engineering point of view. So in this video I will show you how a motor and sensor work. So how this device basically work? You have to attach it to your back using straps and every time you bend over too much, the device vibrates, reminding you to straighten up. In addition, it tracks how many times it triggered, to follow your progress probably. The device is powered from a battery and charged via micro USB. But we are here more interested in electronics inside, so let's disassemble it and look at its components. Inside we can see green PCB with a bunch of components soldered. This is a vibration motor. I assume that this blue component is a tilt sensor. Just to check my assumption, let's play with it a little bit. Now it vibrates, and now it's not. And vibrates, and not. So that is definitely tilt sensor. But what is the working principle behind it? I bet you will not guess, and clearly saying before disassembling it, I also had no clue. So let's tear it apart and look together. So first of all, let's pay attention to its appearance. It has two metal contacts. One sticks from the center of the case and another one is a piece of wire wrapped around. The metal wire was pressed to the case to have a good contact with a blue shrinking tube. But still, no clues how it works. And eventually we see all its parts. Metal ball inside the metal case. So basically when the sensor is tilted in such a way that ball is not touching this gold pin and it only touches metal case, there is no pass for current through two pins and logical zero can be read. But when it's tilted and ball falls down and touches both golden pin and the case, current can flow through one pin to another and logical one can be read. In my opinion it is an interesting solution, because first of all it's cheap, and second it can be easily manufactured. But from the other side it has its own drawbacks. It's not precise at all. Second, it's possible to measure only two states, whether this sensor is tilted more than some angle or less than. Also cause it's in a case with a metal lead, its positioning is complicated in order to achieve desired angle. Remember how easy it was to trigger it by just moving? That means that after assembling, such a sensor must be calibrated by bending its leads in a specific way. But still, even after calibrating, I don't think that high precisions can be achieved. So cheap, simple and easy to reproduce definitely is a pluses. But precision, calibration necessity and its size is obvious minuses. Yeah, also the size. It is really big in comparison to what you can find on the market. You can find much smaller solution in a SMD packages and you just solder them on a PCB. But they are more expensive. Ok, now let's have a look at the vibration motor. Removing the lid we can see two coils glued into the rotor. Rotor itself is mounted on the shaft. So the first question is why it is vibrating? And if you pay attention, first of all you can see that the rotor is not really round, like in a conventional motors. Also, coils are located in one side of it, which makes rotor unbalanced, shifting the center of mass into one side. That is the reason why it shakes. If you want to make a simple experiment, you can put something unbalanced inside the screwdriver and just turn it on. It will be shaking as well. And the more it is unbalanced, the higher will be shaking amplitude. Similar vibration motors are used for example in Xbox controllers. Now if we flip it, we can see winding contacts through which they are powered. And let's go farther. To power motor only two wires are used. That means that it is a simple DC motor with brushes. But instead of a regular one, which has a cylindrical form, this is a planar one, which makes it very slim. So the second question is how this motor works. Let's first look at a stutter and brushes to understand its working principle. As we can see, brushes is a small spring metal contact soldered to a flexible printed circuit board. I believe it is hardly visible, but it is the closest look I can give you. Also to the same PCB, motor shaft is soldered. And this grey ring is a permanent magnet glued to the motor case. So to make the rotor spin, current is delivered from batteries through wires to brushes, which then has a contact with the rotor. And then current flows through rotor windings. 
and when current flows through rotor windings, it creates magnetic field around them due to Ampere's law, and windings becoming a magnets, which are repelled or attracted by a permanent magnet. So what happens next? Because of a specific rotor design, when rotor moves, stator brushes are connecting to different contact plates, and current directions through windings changes, and when we change the direction of a current through the winding, it changes its magnetic field orientation, and rotor is repelled or attracted to a different permanent magnet section again. This process continues until power is applied to the brushes. So that is the working principle of a DC motor with brushes. I believe that is the simplest and cheapest type of a motor that can be used, but not very reliable because of a brushes. If you still don't understand how it works, you can rewatch explanation part again. Decision when to apply power to motor as well as control of all device is made by the microcontroller. It is here. It is Chinese controller and I don't think it is worth looking through its datasheet. I am sure there is nothing interesting for you and me. Let's better look how the system works in general and who is who here. So there are several functions of a controller. It detects when button is pressed, when tilt sensor is triggered, it also controls 7 segment display and the motor. Except main controller there is also small integrated circuit, responsible for battery management. It charges the battery with a 500 mA current, getting as an input 5V. Except that there is another very simple but important circuit related to motor control. The thing is that motor consumes more current that microcontroller can provide, and because of that, motor is connected through a transistor. Moreover, in parallel to the motor there is a diode. Diode is a must-have in such a circuit. Without it, that transistor probably would burn out. Uh, so the question is why? Because motor is an inductive load, it consists of a lot of winds of a copper wire. And the rule that you must remember that current through inductor cannot change immediately. But if we want to close transistor in such a circuit to turn off the motor, we kinda break a circuit, leaving no pass for current that was flowing through inductor before. And such a fast transistor closing creates a voltage spike on its drain. Amplitude of such a spike depends on the multiple parameters, and if transistor wasn't designed for the surge amplitude, it burns out. And the solution is a diode added in parallel to the inductive load, in this case in parallel to DC motor. Such a diode creates alternative pass for current and reduces voltage spike significantly. So if you ever use such a circuit, don't forget about the diode. So as you can see, disassembling electronics devices provides a lot of different knowledge and if you want to learn more popular and interesting solutions in electronics and engineering with the real examples, subscribe and check my other videos. You will find a lot of interesting stuff.